I play a lot of games on Nintendo Switch that benefit greatly from having a D-pad. Unfortunately, the Nintendo Switch Left Joy-Con doesn't have a D-pad. In certain cases, you can kinda get away with it. For example, a lot of people love playing Tetris 99 on the standard Joy-Con because the buttons that are used for directions correspond perfectly with the movements in Tetris 99 where you're only going four ways anyway. But in other styles of games, not having a D-pad is absolutely awful. In particular, I like playing Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle on my Switch, and using these buttons is absolutely miserable. And it took me to a place where I started to investigate options for getting a D-pad on my Switch, which led me down the rabbit hole of looking at custom Joy-Cons, which can be very expensive, or buying a mod kit and that requires a level of workmanship and craftsmanship that I just do not have. So what do you do? I decided to try out the Hori Left Joy-Con with the D-pad on it. It's a product officially licensed by Nintendo, and I've had this for about a year now. And while I personally love it, there are some big drawbacks to using this thing that you should know before you pick one of these up. But before we get into that, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com, and let's talk about the Hori Left Joy-Con and if this is the D-pad solution for you. While I don't want to stall this video any further, I do have to say that this is not a sponsored review, this is not paid for by Nintendo or Hori or anybody. I just happened to own the Hori Left Joy-Con, and this one too, uh, because I bought them. And I, I generally enjoy the product, but there are some challenges with it that we're gonna talk about right now. Let's start with the look of these Hori Left Joy-Cons. Right now, I'm holding the Legend of Zelda one with the, the black transparent plastic. I'm not sure if the transparency is coming through on camera, but you can kind of see through it, and it's a really neat effect. And also we've got the gold trim and the Hyrule symbol at the bottom. It's a very nice looking Joy-Con. And I also have a Super Mario one. I happened to buy a second one because these were on sale. And this one's pretty cool too with the red plastic and Mario at the bottom just below the Joy-Con. And while I think these look great in isolation when you're just looking at them by themselves, they don't really match any of the Joy-Cons that have come out to date. So, for example, I'm going to take this Mario one and put it on my Switch right now. And as you can see, definitely not matching with my gray Joy-Cons here. I know there are red ones out there, but even so, you're not going to get a perfect match of color. So there are some Nintendo Switch fashionistas out there that are going to take issue with that. Personally, I prefer to have the benefits of the D-pad versus making sure that they match. Besides, having different color Joy-Cons is a really cool fashion statement, especially ones as uncommon as this one. The rest of the buttons and inputs on the Nintendo Switch Hori Left Joy-Con are pretty good too. The analog stick, I don't notice a difference between it and the regular left analog stick on a Joy-Con. The trigger on the back, the left trigger, feels pretty much the same. The left bumper is slightly raised versus your standard Joy-Con, but they feel pretty much the same and it's not gonna make any real difference in gameplay. The only ones that feel kind of different are the, the screenshot button and the minus button. They're a different type of plastic. They're raised a little more and they're a bit squishy, but in the grand scheme of things, you're not really hitting those buttons much and it doesn't really matter. And besides, they feel fine. While the Hori Left Joy-Con mimics a lot of what a standard Joy-Con does, there are some big differences between the two that might make this a deal breaker. For example, this thing does not support motion controls. It doesn't have the gyroscopes in them, so if you're playing something like Splatoon or Overwatch or Paladins, you're not going to get the tilt controls. If you really like HD Rumble for whatever reason, personally I don't think HD Rumble is that great, but um, this controller doesn't rumble at all. You'll still get vibrations from the right Joy-Con, but it's not going to be as strong as it would be had both controllers had rumble in them. The biggest drawback of the Hori Left Joy-Con is that it only works in portable mode. It doesn't have its own battery, and it has to draw power directly from the Switch itself. So if you're playing in handheld mode, 
great. The problem is, if you want to take this thing out and you wanted to play, for example, on a Joy-Con grip, it's not going to work because there's no battery to it and it actually doesn't fit, which is something I just discovered as we were making this video. It's very tight. Yeah, it doesn't fit at all. So I guess that's one of the measures of getting people to not do that. Uh, but it is unfortunate because not having a D-pad and playing at home is also a challenge and this does not solve for that. The other thing is, if you wanted to play it sideways with a friend, it doesn't work because there's no battery and it actually doesn't have the buttons at the top. It's just kind of marked there with plastic and it's just flat. There's no button there at all. I personally don't play much in this mode, but for the people that do, it it's just not going to work. With all that said, if you really want a D-pad solution in portable mode, the Hori Left Joy-Con, I would absolutely recommend. The D-pad on it is great. All of the other buttons work as you would expect, and it plays great when it's plugged into the Switch. I like it so much that I have two of them and I mix and match between the different colors and styles. But if you needed to do anything else, if you want to play Splatoon and keep your motion controls, or you want HD Rumble, or you want to split the Joy-Cons and play with friends, or you want to put it into a Joy-Con grip to solve your D-pad issues when playing in dock mode, this is not going to do that. And I understand for a lot of people that's going to be a deal breaker. But personally, at its regular price, which is about $25 US, I think it's worth a plunge of grabbing one of these and at least fixing your D-pad issue in portable mode. If you've got any more questions about the Hori Left Joy-Con, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions personally. For now though, I've got to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, make sure to give it the thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the work I've been doing on YouTube of late, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications on when the next set of videos goes live. Why did I say next set? when the next video goes live. Um, besides that, I'm also on Twitch at in third person. I stream every week and would love to see you there. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at in third person where I post cool stuff every day. And check out my website in thirdperson.com for more articles and videos on video games, board games and other nerdy pursuits where I've got a ton of posts, thousands of posts, including a written review for this Hori Left Joy-Con. So if you want some more information on it, I uh, will put a link to my written review in the description below. All right, actually time to get out of here. I'm going to go and probably play some Fantasy Strike on the Switch, which benefits greatly from this D-pad. So without further ado, let's get out of here. Later! All right, so the thing I've read here playing against the bearded so far is he likes to jump, and if he gets really close, he's going to try and jump away. And we're going to try and punish that with claps. Uh-oh. No, get scooped. This is going to hurt really bad for him. Because he's going to do jump away. Yep. He's going to jump away again. 